Be The Ripple Kindness Cafe is a place to chat about ways in which businesses can build kinder, happier and more productive workplaces, one conversation at a time. Good afternoon ladies and thank you very much for joining us for this Kindness Cafe. It's lovely to see you both. I'm absolutely delighted today that we've got Pinky Lilani with us who's an author, motivational speaker, a chair of many awards recognising influential women and leaders including the annual Women of the Future Awards, the Asian Women of Achievement Awards and the Kindness in Leadership's listing. Um, and very big welcome to you Pinky. Thank you so much for joining us today and also we're joined by Asli Dario who's one of the co-founders of the Be The Ripple movement um, she's a learning and development digital manager at EY she's a board director at the e-learning network and she and I worked together a few years back um, for a period of around six months so thank you both for joining us thank you over to you Asli <laughs> okay um well Pinky again once again Thank you. Thank you for um, talking to us today. And um, as Joanna said, that we've um, been looking at all these different accolades and uh, we'll talk about the kindness campaign in a little while. But before we go into the detail, um, you've been doing a lot of work around kindness. Uh, you've been working with leaders in the past years. And um, I just wanted to get your views around, is there a magic bullet? Um, how can leaders and businesses ensure more kindness happen in their workplace? Is there a key to creating a kinder workplace? Well, I think, unfortunately, in life, there are very few magic silver bullets, you know, and people today love what I call the nest cafe solutions, the instant solutions, <laughs> and they are none, really, because I think everything... Um, you need to kind of integrate it into what you really believe and build it into your values. And I think that takes time and real belief. You can't suddenly say, I want to be seen as a kind leader. And so overnight, I'm somebody different. So I think really it's something that we really need to believe in. There's a lot of work you have to do on it. And as Aristotle once said, you know, you are what you repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act, but a habit. And so with kindness, it's not just an act, but it's a habit that you really are habitually kind. And you know, there are some people who whenever you meet them, they always respect you, they listen to you, and there are others who just simply don't. Um, and I think they can't, there has to be a real um, desire to be and belief in kindness to be able to really walk the talk. Great. And is it something, um, because we, seem to be talking about kindness a lot in the recent years especially um and i want to know what brought up the trigger because you've been talking about this for years and it's is it something that's uh, changed in leadership minds or in the way the businesses are run um that we are now buying into it more or is it that because we are um, fans already so to speak that we believe that this is actually getting the endorsement that it should be getting from leadership i believe for a very long time in kindness because you know with the work i do i realize very much we're a very small company we wanted we were punching above our weight but we were only able to do that because there were so many people who were being genuinely nice and caring and there's a wonderful saying in Islam which said, it's good to give when asked, but better to give when asked to understanding. And we always love those souls who come into our life and without us even saying we want something, they'll say, can I connect you to someone or can I help in this way? And they really mean it. It's not just kind of saying it for the sake of saying it. And I think suddenly we've realized we live in a world that there's so many horrible things happening right just now at this juncture with what's happening everywhere, what's happening in Beirut, what's happening in America, what's happening in India, COVID, everywhere. We just seem to be overwhelmed with bad news. And the one thing about kindness is that they say when you are kind, it actually releases hormones into your body, which gives you a good feeling and makes you feel optimistic and good. And apparently, if you watch somebody being kind, you also feel good and it makes you be more kind and so it you know we're all looking for ways of 
being able to feel better about life. So suddenly kindness and compassion has moved center stage because we realize when we're down, a little nice word from somebody can make all the difference between us feeling absolutely doom and gloom and making a difference and carrying on, being motivated, being inspired. And we all need that, especially when you're all alone working from home, you don't have the camaraderie of others to lift you up. I think kindness has become very, very important. So for me, a kind leader is one who goes from being successful to being significant. And it's a legacy we leave. And I think uh, for, you know, everybody who's very young, you think life is going to be there forever, but suddenly, wham, you know, you're, you're not under 35 anymore, you know, you thought you'd be there, suddenly you're uh, are somewhere far beyond and you realize that you want to leave something behind. And people will never remember you just for your, the profits you made. Um, you know, for a little while they will, but really it's the kindness that people display, I think, is their lasting legacy true words thank you um i am doing my masters and one of the things of course you do when you're studying um read a lot you read a lot of research right um and uh, i know you um recently published or about to publish a uh, um report uh, on kind leadership around crisis and beyond and um can you tell us a bit more about that, where it, how it came about with the COVID and everything and what the key findings from that was? Again, that, the whole research and report goes back to somebody being kind to us. So we have a, a relationship with a company called Omnicom, who's really well known and Holland Partners, one of the agencies, which does a lot of insights for the leading companies. And right at the start of um, the pandemic, the lady I work with there said, you know, they would, Holland Partner will do some research and find out the character traits that are important in leadership, seeing where kindness plays a part during the crisis, because, you know, different things come out in different times of our lives and normal times and that. So it was their kindness and generosity to do this research. And so they actually, I think, interviewed almost 1,500 people around the world. Wow. And so they, they did it, obviously, with no charging of anything and then we came together with three other with the side business school who we actually um, do a lot of work with and so we've done it in collaboration so kindness and collaboration are the dna of all our programs and this is another aspect of that and we were so excited to be able to look forward to hearing what people are saying and that's how it came the, the report is a result of kindness so um, that's the, the, the most important thing for me. And when they went out and did the research, they found, you know, people were, um, I think it was almost somewhere in, in the mid 30% of people said that they would think of leaving their companies um, if they didn't treat them well after COVID, because if they were treated badly, they would leave as soon as they could. And I think, again, we all saw how much, um, you know, the different traits of leadership change during normal times, during a crisis. And whereas courage was seen as not that important in normal times to be a courageous leader, in times of crisis, courage was seen as very, very important. And people want people to be rallying and they want their leaders to be seen as being optimistic because, you know, in normal times, if you have somebody who's very optimistic, it's all right, but during crisis, you really need an optimistic leader, otherwise you're all going to be dragged down. So I said it was those kind of traits that were coming out. But I was slightly um, disappointed that we didn't see a bigger percentage of people saying that kindness was even more important. It was important, you know, a quarter, um, 20, um, quarter percent of the um, quarter of the interviewee said it was important, but I would have liked to have seen 75% saying, but then I think also during the time of crisis, people, it brings out different things in different people. Some people become incredibly negative. Some people have a whole lot of, you know, um, issues, mental health issues, depression. As, as Michelle Obama said in her interview last week, she feels she's suffering from low grade depression. Um, because again, a lot of us have lost control over what we can do. 
I mean, on the one hand, I get up in the morning thinking life is normal. I can go out for a walk. I can go to the shop. But suddenly I stop dead in my tracks because I can't do much more than that. I suddenly can't fly away somewhere where I want to go. I can't go to a big party. And I think, so it, it's a very strange time. And I think it brings out strange reactions in people. So at one minute they could be feeling really high and the other low. So I think leadership becomes even more important. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's one of those things that, that gets talked about from a consumer behavior that uh, how you treat your customers and how you treat your employees will have a massive impact on when things go back to somewhat normal uh, that will impact how people are perceiving you and whether they will come back as loyal customers or not. And in the same way, how uh, companies are treating their current employees will make a massive difference when the times are somewhat back to normal that uh, their employer brand, I think, will be massively impacted if they haven't done the right thing. And um, I mean, we were talking about last time about uh, how corporates behave and uh, how different businesses take different things differently, how different industries uh, behave around kindness. And sometimes it's very difficult to um, deal with those issues if you are working in an in industry that is meant to be very cutthroat competitive you're not meant to be kind because that's seen as a weakness um, and I think these things are changing because as people our expectation from work is changing and COVID put another spin on that and um, so I think it is very important although you may not necessarily see it at the moment within the research as a high percentage because people are perhaps prioritizing in the sense that, you know, I would like to first have a job, right? I have a mouth to feed. Um, but beyond that, I think in the long run, they, the, if we were to perhaps run the same research, it would yeah. show quite different results. Yeah, I definitely. I think, you know, the mood you're in um, affects the answers you give, you know, and I think we started the research with a good, before we saw the end of, you know, we couldn't see any light. We were still in lockdown when they started the research. Mm -hmm. But suddenly on Saturday, I felt I had, I tried to go back to normal. So I'm having small groups of people to my house being, you know, six people and sitting outside. But it's very important for my own sanity and for people, because part of what I do is connect people. And I had a glimmer of hope because there was this young scientist who was there that day. And she was saying how, in the beginning, scientists didn't know when the, the virus mutates, whether it would become more virulent or less. And she said, this is turning out a bit like SARS. So it's becoming, they think it's on track to become less virulent, which is really good news for us because then now we are not hearing as many people dying because I think not only do they have more medication they can give them and they're getting in earlier and probably it's not, may not be as severe. I don't know. I'm just making there's presumptions, but there's a little glimmer of hope that maybe it's become changed my mood for the weekend. So it, it, <laughs> it's our little fact, which may or may not be true. Um, so I think we live in times which we're so emotional and so up and down. So leaders become incredibly relevant. Okay. Um, one last question for me before I hand over to Joanna. Um, from a leadership perspective, um, I, I'm curious to hear the best case study, I guess, the, 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 the ideal compassionate, kind leader. What does that look like? And what are the key characteristics of that person? Because I'm lucky, um, I think I do have a, at my work a very kind leader uh, who leads with a lot of compassion and I'm very lucky. Um, but I want to know from your experience what that compassionate leader looks like. Yeah, I mean, obviously, for me, leadership is all about vision, is having people who believe, you know, in what you do. And that's very important so to have clarity of thought, really, and to have uh, the big picture for leaders important. But then on, you know, they must have very high EQ. So some, you know, a lot of leaders, even though they're there, are actually tone deaf. They don't really hear what everyone's saying or they just pick out the segments that suit their purpose. And I think, again, you 
know, as a leader, the compassion leader has that huge, the LQ, which is the likability quotient, which I speak a lot about, is very high. So what is um, someone who's got high likability? Well, they normally, they listen, they're warm, they're compassionate. They actually go that extra mile to find out if the person is feeling all right, you know, and they take a deep interest in people. And you may say, how can a lead up there take a deep interest in everyone? There's just no way. But I think, you know, you can do it in so many ways. And so now with social media or actually putting something out on uh, communication to everyone saying I'm there if anybody needs me. But if I can't reply to you, someone from my close team will. There's so many ways of being compassionate. And we all come across stories that people will tell us. And I always try to, when I hear about someone, even if I don't know them, I will try to write to them and say, I say, I heard this about you. You don't even know me, but you know, I, I really felt really badly that you were in this position. And that's very easy for leaders because also just as you have reputation is so important, people repeat um, incidents of good leadership and bad leadership. And I know one of my, somebody I know, the leader they have, even in, in this COVID time when people can't meet their targets, instead of their um, leader saying, it's all right, I understand, he's still talking about targets. And so really, um, the person told me, as soon as this is over, I'm going to leave because this guy will never give up on targets, even at this time. So, you know, those kind of messages, the messaging is really important. So I think we can find, I think you have to every day sit and think, how can I do something nice for someone who won't be able to repay me? And that to me is kindness. So, you know, I told you about the CEO who's one of our sponsors who actually, mm -hmm. when I spoke to her, she, you know, the next day her, her EA rang me up and said, you know, your sponsorship is not due till next year, but we know, you know, you're a small company. Do you want us to pay you for next year right now? And I'd never asked for it or anything. And I said, no, we don't need you. But just the thought, the CEO of a really big global company, have the kindness to think of that is really important. So I wanted to ask, there's a few things that you've said, actually, that I thought are actually nuggets of gold in there, Pinky. Um, so you're talking about um, the individual who was saying about the targets over people. Um, and so basically they're prioritizing the outcomes of the organization as opposed to the individuals and not taking a holistic approach. Now that's something that I absolutely agree is so important. Um, and you also talked about the emotional intelligence and how important that is in kindness and leadership within organizations. Do you think that's something that people get enough development on? How do you feel about that in your experience? What have you seen? Well, I, I think you know, a lot of people have um, a natural ability in terms of emotional intelligence or they're very finely tuned. Others need help. And the great thing about emotional intelligence, your emotional quotient, your likability quotient, is that you can actually um, work on it and make it better if you divide it into segments. I mean, sometimes people will just say what they're feeling without thinking of what somebody else is feeling. So in terms of emotional intelligence, it's often good to ask people questions to make notes and say, let me ask before I say exactly what I'm feeling. So you can work on it. And that to me is really very, very interesting because we can all be much more intelligent and therefore much more effective because one little bad word can spoil the whole mood of a meeting and one good word can actually brighten everyone. So I think we can really work hard on emotional intelligence and we should all really do more of that. So I think they are, I, I was telling someone, you know, maybe there should be a short course, just a half day course on helping people to develop what I think are the traits of effective leaders and good people. So how are you more sensitive? How do you listen better? How do you actually engage? How do you display warmth? You meet some people and they shake your hands and they're like, I call it a chicken curry without any masala because it's <laughs> too thin. And so you almost naturally know that they don't have passion. And I think passion is so important for a leader. So I, I think those are things we can work on. Absolutely. And I totally agree with you where you say about the passion being so important. And you said earlier as well about the vision that it's the 
the leader really needs to have clarity of thought, to have the vision, to be able to pull other people along with them and for people to want to follow them. Um, and kindness is a really, really big part of that. I have a mantra and I don't know how many do you guys have mantras, but I think mantras are very important. And I remember I had a a law firm coming, some people from a law firm coming for a team building day uh, with me in my house, which I do with cookery. And it's a very powerful law firm and their main partner was coming. And I, uh, in the pre-work to the day, I said, can you come with your mantra? And they, 50% of them didn't have a mantra and the other 25% said they were starting to Google what is a mantra. And can I, <laughs> mantra is something that is what you stand for. So for me, my mantra is you have not lived a perfect day unless you've done something for someone who can never repay you. So people say, how can, and that goes back to kindness. So um, how can you be kind every single day to someone who can never repay you? So I had to think of a way I could do that. For many years ago, I started walking the streets of London every time I went out with five gold coin chocolates. <laughs> and the next day when I went into a company, if I went into EY or I went in wherever, if the receptionist was really nice to me, she smiled at me, she engaged with me, I'd say, can I give you a chocolate? And 95% of people would say, oh, that's really nice because most people don't even look at them. Or I would make sure I had a conversation to ask them about, you know, what they did, etc. And it becomes so easy giving out those chocolates. And you can see how people, it's something different. So I think, you know, when you want to do something that actually becomes part of your persona, it has to flow. You know, where if, it's, if you can make out, again, it goes back very much to authenticity of being yourself. So if you try to be something and pretend you're interested when you're really not interested in the person, it will come through. I mean, there's so many people you meet who, because they think they should listen, you can See, they're not really, their eyes are glazed, they're looking somewhere else, they're not engaging. So I think kindness begins with just listening to someone, giving them the space to be themselves. So authenticity really comes in to kindness very much so. So again, you know, going back to how can leaders be kind, I think you can decide, but it's so easy, it's little things that can make a huge difference. And as a leader, I remember being invited to speak in India, and it was a girl who worked for a big bank. She used to work here and she moved to India. And her EA rang me up and said, we'd love you to come and speak in India. And I said, I'd love to. And she said, but we can't pay you your travel. But if you're coming there, then we would be happy to pay you. What are your fees? So I actually coated half the amount I normally charge because I taught it to India. And she came back to me and she said, my boss said, ma'am, that's not your fees. We will pay you your full amount. You have pay, uh, uh, coated for much less. I mean, how powerful is that? That when you are, she was a kind leader, but also she went out of her way to pay me what she thought I really deserved. And I have never forgotten that. So going back to kindness, people never forget a kindness. And people also never forget somebody who's been unkind. As much as you say, get it out. So I think in terms of leadership, that whole lesson around how can a leader be seen to be compassionate, be seen to be interested, to be warm, to actually get into people's minds and make a difference. So, you know, lots of things that leaders can do are very, very, make it part of their, I mean, they could set half an hour every single day and say, it's my kindness half an hour. And you may think, why do you need to do that? You should do it all the time. But actually it brings it into your conscious competences. And soon, if you do it so often, it'll become an unconscious competence which is, would be fabulous. So kindness should be that unconscious competence all of us have. Absolutely. I really like that idea of building time into your diary until it becomes a habit. So if you continuously do that, then it will become a habit and you won't need to think about it anymore. I really like that. Thank you. Um, so the kindness in leadership listing, I'd like to ask you about that, if you've got time to just tell us a little bit about it. And how do people nominate, importantly? Okay, very exciting. So kindness and leadership, 50 leading lights, was set up two years ago, and we do it in association with the Financial Times and the Science Business School. And the list is published on World Kindness Day, which is November 13 in the Financial Times. 
And so we want to really give a platform to kind leaders. And I know all the leaders who were on our list on the first year, we had Paul Pullman from Unilever. Last year, we had Jurgen Klopp from the Liverpool Football Club. So very, very different people from different fields, but they're kind leaders everywhere. So we want that range of leaders. And I think most people are delighted to be nominated and make the list. And a lot of them have said that's the best accolade that they've got to be seen as a kind leader as well as successful. So we have anyone can nominate anyone. I would prefer people not to tell the person in case they're not shortlisted. We have um, last year we did 40 senior leaders and 10 young leaders to watch. So it gives everybody uh, an aspiration. And then, of course, um, somebody asked me last week, which I found so funny, because she said, do you think I can nominate myself for the kind leader? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> but it just shows how people, but she said, oh, it'd be really nice to be on the list. So um, I think that's what we want. We want people nominated. Nominations are open till the first week of September. It's the greatest compliment you can give somebody to say that I think you're a kind leader. So we had people from the medical field, from, you know, the, the fields we don't normally like, you know, the civil service, uh, government, you know, it, people don't normally see bankers um, as being kind. And I'm sorry, you know, they often see people in consulting or private equity as being not that kind. And I think there's kindness everywhere. We just have to look for it. Um, Absolutely. If you start looking um, you know, for something, then you find it. They say in dark times, the eyes begin to see. So when, when I'm totally, I've got no inspiration, I actually get the best ideas because I go back and think, how could I think differently? And I think we need to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you've got a really good point there with regard to the darkness. Um, and as you've pointed out earlier, we've got the Black Lives Matter, we've got things happening around the globe, um, COVID, there's so much going on. And I think that that really does bring out the best in communities and bring out a lot of kindness. I've certainly seen a lot of it, and I'm sure that you both have as well in the different communities. So I think this kindness in leadership listings is just so exciting and it's a real opportunity for people to highlight the individuals that have had a really big impact on them and have made a difference to their lives during this time and before that as well. So it's wonderful. So for people to nominate, if we put the link onto the video, then people just need to go through to that, um, nominate before the first week in September. September, did you say? It's the seventh or, uh, you know, I think it's around the 7th of September that we close. And then we have a panel of judges who will um, shortlist them and we'll come down to the last 55. And then again, a panel of judges. Um, we've got an amazing um, chairman for our judging panel. Her name is Her Royal Highness Princess Badia. And she's one of those very, so we wanted really people who are very credible because otherwise people will question why is this one there? Why is that one not there? Yes. So they were the judges and then nobody will know till um, November 13th. And I really want people just as International Women's Day has really caught everyone's imagination. But I think we're all overwhelmed with too many activities around International Women's Day. I think everyone's having things. I want people to really make a song and dance about World Kindness Day. So maybe for companies to say it's World Kindness Day, why don't we do some, you know, come up with things that we can do to be a kind of society? And uh, I love one of my favorite sayings really is, um, it says that, you know, when you're kind, it says the fragrance always stays in the hand that gives the rose. Oh, so when good. you're kind, it's not only, you know, that the person feels, the receiver feels good, but the person who gives it, the fragrance of what you've given stays with you forever. Absolutely. That's beautiful. I love that. And talking about the World Kindness Day, I think that it's a really good idea to get organisations motivated to doing something towards kindness on World Kindness Day. So hopefully we can have a conversation with you in the future and we can maybe collaborate on doing something, launching some kind of collaborative project. I would love that. And before, you know, you let me go, I really want to say a very big congratulations to both of you because you'll have both been inspirational in your warmth, in your passion, 
in your belief and uh, it's been absolutely such an honor to be dealing with both of you oh thank you so yeah, much so uh, absolutely likewise from us um i've got one more thing before we go if that's okay so there's these little cards and we're going to end every kindness cafe with the same card so just a question for you pinky it's if i could tell you one thing so what one piece of advice could you offer to a colleague based on your experiences in life and or career that may assist them so what one piece of advice if you could only give one nugget of advice to people what would it be very difficult but I know I think you know be kinder than you have to because I think you know that brings all kinds of things because you feel good the person feel good the person there's such a huge amount of reciprocity whenever you're kind to someone they want to give it back so it leads to all kinds of things so it makes your mm -hmm. large world even larger so I would say be kinder than you have to Fabulous, thank you so much. And Asli, I'll ask you the same question. What would your oh. <laughs> advice be? Ah, um, Pinky talked about authenticity early on, and it, this is one thing that I feel quite strongly about because I often find myself in life, um, at school especially, the odd one out. Um, and uh, yeah, I think do you not lose your authentic self because eventually. Um, especially if you are in the right environment, that people will see you, the true you, um, and they will um, accept you, want you, uh, want to work with you, love you. Um, but yeah, do not lose your authentic self. I think that would be the one piece of advice. I would Brilliant. Think. I love it. Thank you very much. Well, can you tell us what? Can you tell us what you a uh, piece of advice you would give to us? Oh my gosh! I'm <laughs> on the spot Table now. Turn. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but it's funny you should ask that because it's very similar to something that you said earlier, Pink. So I really love the Maya Angelou quote, which is people will forget what you said, they will forget what you did, but they will never forget the way you made them feel. And that's my mantra in life is that people really will never forget the way that you made them feel. Um, and even the smallest interaction can make a massive difference. So my one piece of advice is just to make sure that you're kind. To people then leave footprints in their hearts that are kind footprints yes, no, that, that's absolutely mm. wonderful um i love the footprints because it's saying because some people come into our lives and quietly go away and others leave footprints on our hearts and we're never the same again absolutely and funny because i said that at ernst and young about 10 years ago i was running the board <laughs> and a girl wrote to me saying she was so moved by that she actually used it in her uh, a wedding to actually tell her husband that uh, in the ceremony mm -hmm. so it was uh, it, you know you leave those footprints and we all need to leave some wonderful footprints especially in these hard times absolutely agree with you um i just want to say a big thank you to you for joining us pinky and for you asli as well for the kindness cafe thank it's you pinky she's the, she's the star in this yeah it's been absolutely <laughs> glorious speaking to you and to hear about everything you're doing um it's just absolutely incredible and I'm looking forward to the kindness in leadership listings um, I can't wait to see who's on there we're going to spread the word as much as we can um, and hopefully there'll be so many nominations and it'll be really nice actually I don't know if there's an opportunity possibly that we could share stories around um, the people who got the listings and what they're achieved why they were nominated and that kind of thing um, It'd be wonderful to hear all those stories and see the inspirational people that are out there. Definitely. And um, thank you very much once again. And have a lovely week. Thank, thank you. you so much, Pinky. You too. You take care. Speak bye to you bye. soon. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you for joining our Kindness Cafe. There will be another cafe very soon. Our mission is to imagine a more positive future for all workplaces. Each of us creates a ripple in the workplace, and when we join ripples together, we can be the ripple that creates a huge wave of positive change. Want to join our Kindness Collective? If you're interested in being part of the Be The Ripple movement, here's how you can join us. You can find us on Twitter at Be The Ripple 2020. You can find our LinkedIn group by searching Be The Ripple. And you can also find us via our website, 
The URL is on the screen. We hope to see you very soon.